Hey everyone, welcome to Candidly Unapologetic with Therapist Jen. This is your 15 minutes of candid discussion about mental health that will invite you to question traditional treatment practices and will always leave you with a holistic nugget to better your own mental health. Welcome everyone. I'm happy to have you here. We're on the seventh episode. It's crazy to me that that that's where this is at. I appreciate those of you that are listening. And if you like it, share this with other people. Um, you know, I, I, my goal is to make make the world a better place and share some knowledge that maybe you didn't have and to kind of challenge you a little bit. Remember, we got to get just a little inquist, you know, inquisitive and pissed at the same time. Remember this? This is what we got to do. So let's challenge ourselves a little bit. So thank you, everyone. Again, I, I appreciate those that, that are there listening to me right now. I've got some exciting news. Um, today's topic, we are going to talk about a neurotransmitter, serotonin. Now, I, I, I know for some of you that probably sounds kind of boring, but I want you to stay with me because because it's actually fascinating, going to change your lives, okay? Because it's going to give you some options to think about when it comes to your mental health that you probably weren't fully aware of. So really, it's going to make your life easier. So 15 minutes easier life, you got to sit here and listen. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about mood and food. Before I do that, though, I got to give you a little bit of backstory on where uh, today's topic came from. So there's been a lot going on in my life in the last few weeks. Um, there's two two big things. One uh, is that I was recently certified as a um, nationally certified neural health coach um, by the uh, Dr. Callie Estes Addictions Academy. If you do not know who this fantastic woman is, look her up on LinkedIn, check her out on the Googler. Um, She is a celebrity addiction coach. The girl's got more credentials after her name than I could ever care to spend money on. And she's so smart when it comes to holistic methods and looking at things other than traditional treatments to help people who struggle with addiction. And so getting certified through her, um, her Addictions Academy is super cool because I was trained in really truly learning more about the neurotransmitter pathways in the brain and how those translate to our symptoms that we struggle with. So I'm going to bring a piece of that little slice of that pie here today to everyone. Um, the other, the other little thing that kind of got added in here recently for me um, is a new radio endeavor that I have started. And so if you're listening to me on here and you're like, oh, her voice is okay. I mean, except for today, I'm definitely under the weather. Um, fall has hit me about 18 hours early. Um, So if you like what you're hearing, I need you to get on and say, hey, Google, or hey, Alexa. And then you're going to tell your smart devices to play Sunny 97.7 on TuneIn Radio. And there you are going to hear me during the weekdays on the morning show um, with host Nick and Friends. I'm one of the friends, and you're going to get to hear more candid Jen, um, candid conversations with me, candid confessions, uh, some fun little things that, you know, might brighten your day up a little bit. So get on your smart device and say that, or get on radioplusinfo.com, and you can listen live to Sunny 97.7 and hear me um, in the weekdays on the morning show. So this morning on the morning show, we talked about tomorrow, which is the start of fall, right? And with fall comes these dips in mood that happen naturally for a lot of us. And so I was thinking a little bit more about this after we got done talking about this on the radio this morning. And I kept thinking, I want to give people a little bit more nugget of information on ways in which you can manage mood in in a way other than, you know, our good old big pharma, uh, throw, throw an SSRI at it, we'll see how you're doing in six months kind of attitude, right? So today's question that I'm going to pose to everyone is, does food impact mood? And on its most simplistic level, the answer is yes, and this is what we're going to dive into today. So Tomorrow being the first day of autumn, one of the things that starts to happen is our serotonin levels start to naturally decrease, okay, when fall hits. And I want to talk a little bit about what serotonin is, okay? So given the Reader's Digest nutshell of it, everyone, serotonin is, is it's 5-HT. Um, let's get all the fancy words out right away. Essentially, it's a neurotransmitter, okay, that 
acts and functions similar to that of a hormone. All right. And so serotonin basically takes and carries these messages between your nerve cells and your brain, right? This is your central nervous system and throughout your body. body. Okay. That's our peripheral nervous system. And the chemical messages that they send essentially tell us, tell the body, like it's like the life instruction book of how things need to work. And so serotonin plays several roles in in our bodies. Um, It helps with learning, right? It influences memory. Um, It can impact sleep. Um, Let's talk maybe a little bit about libido. Yep, that's serotonin. Maybe the temperature, regulating body temperature and whether or not you're sensitive to to heat, okay, or pain. Um, Mood in general, depression, anxiety, uh, these these in general, uh, you know, are all impacted by serotonin. And so once the fall hits, which, you know, it starts tomorrow and I'm going to stay positive on this one and I'm going to stay really energetic with this because this fall is going to be different for me because things are, 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 are just changed for me. New career, new outlook. And you know what? You guys listening to me, you can have all of that too, because I'm going to continue to bring some of that candid empowered energy to everything that I output, whether it's in my social media, whether it's in my podcasts, whether it's within the Live, Love, and Eat magazine, um, which which you're going to see a monthly article I write for that. I'm always going to bring you some energy. So even when you're feeling a little low, you can just turn to me. I'll give you a little boost, okay? So this... I'm going into this fall season differently than I did before. And I'm going into this knowing that I am going to tackle my serotonin in a way that I've never tackled it before. Anyone listening knows that I'm on a good 18 to 20 year journey of trying to get off of an SSRI. Um, The process of titrating off has started and with that is also coming a change in what I eat. And that's where this is going to be key of what we're talking about today. So most of the serotonin, okay, that we have in our bodies, okay, is often in our gut. This is like where it's produced. This is where all the magic happens, okay? It could be upwards of almost 90% of our serotonin is, is found in those cells in the lining of our gut. So think about this for just one second. If serotonin production is coming from the gut, does what we eat matter, Oh, yeah, I think so. I think it actually might make a difference, right? So when you when you think about the neurotransmitter serotonin, when there is an imbalance, okay, our mood shifts, all right? And so that's a really big one. We also sometimes have some, some troubles with irritability. I can tell you in the fall, okay, full, full candid disclosure, I get irritable, all right. I actually get worse cravings, okay, for different foods. Uh, I'm more sensitive to like heat. And I will tell you, I will go and have hot flashes and wonder where the hell did those come from? Yeah, this happens more in the fall to me. All right. And so the other big one for me, um, and I don't know if anyone else can resonate with this, but things for sleep start to shift with me just a little bit. It actually takes me a little bit longer to fall asleep. Um, And the last one, which I I giggle because I just did this a few days ago, I start to get a little bit more impulsive with my thoughts and my actions. And I giggle because, you know, I just went and bought something on the Amazon that I did not need. But it was like this thought that just stuck there and over and over and over until I went and I purchased it, right? And so there's a few things that can happen when our serotonin levels start to dip. Now, I know that mine do. Um, One, because I can, one, resonate with all of these symptoms, but two, I've had some testing done on my serotonin levels to see where they're at. And they're not in the very best space. Okay. And so... What what comes next? Where does food come into this? So we talked about the intestines and the gut. And if you really think about it, what we eat matters because we really want to be able to take and boost that gut health, which is something a little separate that we could talk a lot more about that we're going to have. I'll I'll do another podcast on that one at a different time. We'll do gastro track and what that all looks like. But today we're going to just focus on the serotonin neurotransmitter and what does it need to produce some of those really great chemicals for you uh, in the gut through the lining that 
actually connects to the brain because what happens in our gut has a direct impact on what's happening in our brain. And so there is a connection there that um, is very noteworthy. And that's why we're talking about it today. So let's get to the nitty gritty, right? Enough talking, Jen. Tell us what can I do? So let's look at what we're eating. The neurotransmitter serotonin needs a couple things to get it get it to grow and boost. It needs some 5-HTP, which is an amino acid, and it needs some tryptophan. So what we're going to talk about is the foods that we could eat that actually help that shift. They those these these nutrient cofactors, as they are called, which is our iron, our B3, our vitamin C, our D, all those good things that are going to help boost these amino acids and produce what we need in the gut to the brain to make some serotonin. All right. So I'm going to give everyone permission to eat more of a few things here going into this fall. And I want you to really jump on this and think about it because how could you incorporate this more into your diet, right? So what does serotonin need? It needs tryptophan, iron, okay, some B3, some vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B6. Now, there is more than that. These are the categories I'm going to start with right now just to make it simplistic today for people, all right? So how can I get tryptophan? Who sits on the couch after the big, huge turkey meal on Thanksgiving and is about ready to just say, hey, roll me out? Okay, well, I do. Why Why is that? Well, there is some science behind this. There is a there is a really lots of highs amounts of tryptophan in turkey. It's also in oats and in whole wheat bread and get your dark chocolate fix on because that's your tryptophan, all right? Add some chia seeds, add some cashews, pistachios, almonds. These are super high in tryptophan, right? What else, what else does serotonin need? It needs iron. So start flipping your labels over and look at things that are high in iron. Some really big, big players are your chickpeas, spinach, lentils, um, maybe beef, add some potatoes, um, canned tomatoes, super high in iron. Who, who would ever think of that? Dried apricots, one of my favorites sesame seeds, even some of your breakfast cereals, they're going to have iron in them. Flip it over. Look at the label. Then let's look at our B3, okay? Um, This is really going to come from your red meats. Um, Chicken and turkey and tuna um, and even salmon also have some B3 in them. Um, And then maybe just a little, your whole wheat breads, your whole wheat pastas, brown rices, okay? Get your B3 on. What else does our serotonin need? Well, it's going to need some vitamin C. So, you like oranges? Great. Add that in there. There's other ones that are even higher than oranges, right? We we advertise vitamin C with as oranges all the time, that connection, right? But guavas, kiwis, bell peppers, um, even strawberries, tomatoes, um, grapefruit, kale, those all have vitamin C in them. What else does serotonin need? Our vitamin D. So bring in the D. Most of us have super low levels of vitamin D. All right. This girl right here, I'm taking usually between eight and 10,000 I use a day. Yeah. So think about that for those of you that are, are your vitamin D connoisseurs. What does your body really need? Probably a lot more than you're taking in. So add some portobello or shiitake mushrooms. Are you a fish person? Trout? Mackerel, salmon, tuna, bring all that in. Okay, obviously your orange juice is going to have that. Milk, even non-dairy milk has vitamin D in it. My almond milk upstairs, my coconut almond milk, I was just checking it out before, before I started here, super high in vitamin D. All right, then cheeses, yogurts, eggs, all that good stuff. And then lastly, serotonin is also going to need some B6, right? This is your P5P. Again, here's your milks, your ricotta, your cheeses, your your yellowfin, uh, tuna, eggs, um, what's some other? Sweet potatoes. Once again, your chickpeas, bananas. Again, your breakfast cereals can have them. Some avocados, some prunes, things like that. And then one of my favorites, of course, comes back to the apricots and kiwi quinoa. So why am I saying all of this? Well, I was never taught this when I walked into the doctor's office. And you know, I I get on my horse about this a little because we've talked about this before on this podcast. But why is it that I was never given a prescription for food? My prescription was an SSRI to manage my mood. And yet 
there are so many other alternate options. If someone would have sat me down and educated me just a little bit and went, hey, you add a few of these things and boom, 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 you actually might notice a difference in how you feel. And if you start paying attention to your gut health a little bit more and start, you know, actually eating things that are, oh, I don't know, fermented. Um, yes, you can go ahead and have that sauerkraut every day, Jen, because it's probably going to be really good for your gut. But I wasn't taught that, right? And so today's nugget of information for everyone is that food really truly does impact mood. And how does it? It's through your neurotransmitters. Today's focus was on serotonin. And we're talking about that neurotransmitter today because the fall starts tomorrow. And with that comes dips naturally in our body's production of serotonin. So what can we do to boost that so that we don't get irritable, so that we're not super impulsive, so that our mood doesn't dip, so that our sex drives don't decrease, so that I can actually fall asleep Maybe not have so many hot flashes or maybe actually have an appetite because typically when our serotonin levels dip, we're not hungry and the, and the appetite goes. So what I want you to know is food does impact mood and I want you to take that candid dose of empowered energy and I want you to make things happen.